Hey everybody, welcome to Ecuador News. Hope everyone's doing great. So in today's Ecuador News, we're only going to be talking about crime. We have a mid-year update where we have some new information, which I'm going to be going through in a fair amount of detail. But first, before we do that, I want to address one thing, is that there's a lot of YouTubers, all of us who've been talking about crime over the last few months, and especially the last couple of weeks, it started to get a little worse again in Ecuador in many areas. And the Monta area has experienced some increased crime and a few other spots as well. And as YouTubers, one thing you need to know, like we we do this for really two reasons. One, we we love uh, you know the hobby of it. We we like talking about our experiences here, um, and and we like to inform people. But it doesn't mean we're always going to agree. So some of us will be saying one thing that seems to contradict another. We're just normal people. We do our research. We have our feelings. Um, it's just like in your own family of where everyone's not, to, not going to agree on every single issue. Um, the other thing is that uh, most of us, actually all of us that are in Ecuador right now, uh, you know, are not making a lot of money off of this. So I don't want people to think that all oh, these YouTubers are making all this money and are trying to manipulate people and, and exaggerate things good and bad. Uh, you know, that's not true at all. I, I really respect all of the YouTubers out there and everything that they do. I watch, uh, you know, most of the channels and these are really, really good people doing the best that I can, our best that they can. Um, and that's what you sort of need to realize. Um, we do get, and they'll say it too, I'm sure, we do get a lot of hate out there um, from some people who disagree with us, and, and almost all of us will keep the comments up, provided they're respectful and everything, because there's nothing wrong with having different opinions on different things. So if you're seeing YouTubers disagree about how serious the crime is, uh, and that type of thing. It doesn't mean someone's right and someone's wrong. You have to do your own research as well. Watch everything and read everything you can. Um, you know, recently in the alone area, there was someone with a family who wrote the local Facebook group who wanted to know what their opinions were, the people who are already here on the crime in this area because they were gonna move in with their, with, uh, with their kids. And I think without exception, uh, like 99% of the people said, oh, it's very safe here, feel comfortable, come on down, come on in. In that same week, there was someone writing e Ecuador expats asking, oh, I wanna rent a car at night uh, after arriving in uh, Guayaquil airport and uh, I wanna drive that night. And she wasn't asking whether it was safe or not, but everybody, almost without exception, said that's really a bad idea. And a lot depends on where you are in the country and what time and all kinds of things. And we're going to be going through that in detail uh, behind these numbers. So we ended the year, or the overall year, was 44.5 deaths per 100,000. And by any standard, this is a terrible number. It's one of the worst in the world. The interesting thing is, is actually when you look what's behind this number, and that adds a little bit more context to it, which, which we will do. The other thing that's interesting, and you should know, is that if you use just the December deaths of 2023, and you extrapolate that over the whole year, it's actually 49 which is even a worse number. So it ended uh, the last few months of the year on a high note in a negative way. So the first thing to note here is over the last five years, it has gone up pretty much month by month as the year went on. And you can see the, the highest, the 2023 numbers, ending at 736 uh, intentional deaths. Now that has not happened so far from what we can see, from what we can know in 2024. Noboa certainly has turned things around. The question is how much has he turned it around and can it be sustained? Because there has certainly been an uptick 
across most of the country within the last month or so, month and a half perhaps. So let's take a look at uh, the situation. So recently, NABOA has declared a new state of emergency, state of exception in seven provinces within Ecuador. Now, we tried this a few weeks ago, but the Constitutional Court said it really wasn't valid since he didn't give enough justification for it. It was a very short decree. This new decree is over 43 pages long, and this is where we were able to get some information on where we are as far as homicides are within the country. So this is quoted out of a uh, uh, major newspaper in Ecuador. So you can see that there's the seven provinces and there's 1920 homicides between January and it's actually uh, based on my further research into about the middle of May. And this represents 87% of the national total of homicides, which is fantastic that they gave the 87% number because then through some simple math, we can actually figure out the homicides in the whole country from January to May. And with that, we can figure out the uh, number of homicides per 100,000 people. The other thing this talks about is that these numbers are kind of hidden. They're very difficult to find. Um, last year, the uh, Ministry of the Interior had all of these charts out and updated it month by month, and you could sort of see exactly what was going on and what the trend was. This year, for whatever reason, I don't know, it's much more difficult to be able to get that information. Okay, there's a lot going on in uh, this map, so let's take it all in. You might want to pause it at the end. Uh, so you can understand it better, but let me explain it first. Is the map of the country shows the uh, number of deaths per 100,000 in 2023 by province. So the first thing to note here is that it is very different depending on where you are in Ecuador. The, coast, uh, the coastal provinces are just terrible by any measure and uh, also some of the north areas, um, but also the interior, most of it is in quite good shape. The other thing, these arrows that are overlaid are where the new states of emergency are. And you can see there's seven provinces that have been picked out by Naboa. Now what's interesting here, this is where you can get a lot of information from, Esmeraldas which was a disaster last year. And even though it was a, a disaster last year, it was an improvement over the year before. So it seems like without having specific information about Esmeralda so far in 2024, it certainly has improved enough that there's not a state of emergency there right now. If you watch our channel, you've seen this one before. This shows where the curfews were with the last state of emergency. Now with this new state of emergency, there's no curfews. The red areas, and the reason I'm showing this is I wanna point out something, is remember the last one we looked at and the whole coast was red. And the reason the whole coast was red, that was looking at it from the province point of view. This is looking at it another level of detail down and it's looking at essentially the counties. So if you look in the coast, there's lots of green areas and even the counties, like for example, if you look at the one I'm in, Santa Elena, it's really the end piece um, that is a problem. So that's why you see a lot more green on this map since it's down at that local level. So you can see there's even a lot of safe areas within the provinces that have the states of emergency right now. This map is a very important map and really what it shows, the uh, reason I'm showing it to you is because it has the uh, 2023 numbers in it, but what I want to show you is the yellow lines. And those yellow lines are roads and you can see up through just to the west of the Andes as you go from south to north that particular road, I don't know what it's called, 
but you see all the red things around it uh, as you go through that. You never want to go on that road at night, and probably most of the time you don't want to go on that road, period. Um, it's really used by a lot of cartels to go, to go uh, uh, north and south, as well as the road starting at Puerto Lopez going north along the coast also has some issues, but not quite as bad at all compared to um, the uh, interior road. So with this new map of Manabe province, you can see we do have some 2024 data here, and you can see compared to the first few months, or the first five, six months within 2023, comparing that to 2024, many areas are higher in Manabe. And that's troubling considering that much of the country is lower. So let's do that math I was talking about earlier to figure out the new number. So if we're starting with 1,920 deaths, and that covers 87%, using simple math, we get 2,206 to cover all of the 100% of the deaths up until the middle of May. Then we have to extrapolate that. So basically what we do is we take that 2206, we figure out what the daily deaths are, and then we go with those daily deaths for the whole year, which comes to 5964 or 33 deaths per 100,000, which is a big improvement over the 45 that we had in 2023. So this makes an assumption that for the rest of the year, it doesn't get any worse than it is uh, so far in the first part of the year. And it also assumes there's no improvements. So it's a decent improvement. If you can compare it to just December's number of 2023, which was 49 per 100,000, it's about a 30% improvement on average across the country. So once uh, you have that number, so we're now at 33, you have to think, how does this really affect me? And so we have to break down that uh, number some more. And we don't have hard, hard data, but we do have a number of quotes over uh, the last year and a half, certainly since I've been here from the police. And it seemed to have stacked up is that, is that the majority of that and some of the quotes are 70%, some of the quotes are 90% is cartel on cartel. But, but let's just assume it's 50%, which no one has quoted that low. But let's just make that assumption. And then there's the second amount, which, which is sort of the, the, the next range, which is domestic violence. So we don't know what percentage that is, but it's probably at least 5%. So when we sort of look at those things, those things don't really affect you as long as you're not in a home with domestic violence and as long as you're, you're not part of the cartel, those numbers don't affect you. So you've got to cut down, especially the cartel number. That's the biggest one. You've got to cut down from that 33, let's say 50%. Because most countries, if you're comparing against the uh, U.S., in Canada, there's not huge cartels killing each other on a regular basis in those countries. So you really do need to compare a smaller number to have a true comparison. And it's also good to understand how it could affect you. Another way to understand how it affects you is comparing to things that we know. So here's the latest numbers in 2023. Um, in the United States for, for cities. And you can see in brackets, these are also, and you have to use big enough cities so you can actually figure out the uh, homicide rate per 100,000 people. If you use a small city, the number can just not really make any sense. It's not statistically valid when you're trying to figure out 100,000 people and your town has 5,000 people. And you can see some major cities that I put down in Ecuador measure extremely favorably. 
and that's really an understatement, against some major cities in the United States. And if you look at Cuenca, the most popular place uh, for expats in Ecuador, um, is, is well below, it would, it, would, it would be below the majority of, of cities in the United States. So, you know, really talking about this 45 and not really looking deeper as to what the numbers are, it's really not accurate in my view. You really need to look at individual cities, individual areas, where the trend is going, uh, and compare that to things that you're comfortable already doing. So you get an idea. You know, you look at Las Vegas or New Orleans, and I tend to pick those two when I talk about this because they're tourist areas, and people go there all the time without thinking twice about it. But because of the media and lots of other things that is happening in Ecuador, and again, I'm not trying to minimize, there's some serious issues in certain areas of Ecuador that certainly need to be resolved. And uh, as far as the coast goes, without having hard, hard numbers to absolutely prove it, um, I would suggest that sort of middle part of the coast from uh, Mangler Alto all the way up to Iampi would fall within this range that we're seeing from Cuenca, Loja, Rio Bamba, it's somewhere in around there without having the real numbers. And we'll give an update. As soon as we get real numbers, we'll show what they are. But certainly that's the feeling here where, where we're living and uh, what everyone really talks about here, both local people and, um, and expats. So here's, here's another chart. You might want to pause and sort of find out. This is, again, going by, by county. You want to look on the left-hand side, and that gives you the number per 100,000. And you can see there's, there's some horrible areas at the top. And this is using the 2023 numbers, not 2024. So things have improved in many areas, uh, but certainly not in all. And in some areas, it has gotten worse, as I mentioned. Um, so, you know, but you can look at Quito, you can look at Loja and Bato. Um, there's many areas where the numbers are, are quite low and would be lower, uh, lower this year in 2024. A lot of emphasis gets put on crime. The media talks about it all the time, not just in Ecuador, but all around the world. Wars, crime, homicides. And you have to sort of look at how that influences your decision making. Because there's other risks um, that are actually higher than crime, that the media hardly covers at all. Because really that's what you're looking for when you're looking at you know, moving your country um, or even going from a city to another city. You're looking at, oh, is this a good place to go? Is it safe? That's one of the things you look at and you put a lot of emphasis to. And I'm not saying you shouldn't look at it. But there's probably other things and other decisions in your life that are actually riskier, far riskier, that you don't really pay much attention to. And we'll cover that in a second. The other is the whole media influence. So here's something that happened to me in January after the cartel went into the TV station. Um, a large, prestigious newspaper chain in in Canada got in touch with me one of the major reporters that does a lot of reporting very respected got in touch with me and wanted to know this is maybe two or three days after after uh, January 9th so probably the, the 11th or 12th um, we had a phone meeting and she wanted to do a story and I basically said Everything was actually really quiet. I was pleasantly surprised. Went through the first couple nights feeling, feeling pretty good. There's a, there's a state of emergency now on, and we're just going to sort of take it day by day. And that wasn't a story to her. The fact that there was no issues, and she contacted not just me, she also mentioned that she contacted a number of Canadians. And so there was no story about uh, how everything was calm and fine after that. No, we just saw more stories about repeating the violence and some of the issues that happened those couple days. 
We didn't see any stories about how it calmed down, uh, which it did dramatically. Um, so that's the way the media can influence uh, how you sort of think about things. So here's a chart that shows other risks. And they're also using the same criteria or the same measure. That is uh, how many uh, deaths per 100,000 people. And you can see heart disease. Now, this is the, the latest information I was able to get is the green line, 2021. And you can see heart disease, cancer, COVID, un unintentional injuries. Obviously, COVID is going to be a lot less now in, in uh, 23, 24. Stroke, you know, you can read down the list there. And the reason I wanted to show this is that certainly heart disease, cancer, especially heart disease, some cancers, and uh, certainly unintentional injuries, a lot of those are choices that affect those dramatically. And we don't even think of it like that. And the media barely talks about it. But they're lifestyle choices, uh, you know, around health, body weight, uh, and just let's throw a number in here for, for body weight. Let's move to the next, uh, the next slide. So here's an interesting chart that shows the death rate from obesity in 2019. So these are the estimated annual number of deaths by country uh, for obesity per 100,000 people. And you can see different parts of the world. Uh, it's higher, but those numbers are also looking at per 100,000 people. So Canada, it's 25 to, you know, 50. And the uh, United States, 50 to 100. Numbers significantly higher than, than crime rates. And I think we all know that, you know, we need to shed a few pounds, most of us. But I don't think we take it maybe as seriously. And I didn't know, actually, until I started doing the research for this project. Um, and it's a little scary, and it's because obesity obviously um, contributes dramatically to the previous chart, uh, heart disease and, uh, and many cancers uh, as well, as we get more information as time goes on and science develops more. We're finding out all this information of all the things that can kill us. How fun, right? And, um, but, it, but it sheds a light into why we can't just put the emphasis that we're putting on crime and being afraid of walking down the street and going out of our homes. Um, another one is, is uh, and I don't have a chart for it, in Ecuador, I know the number off the top of my head, is for traffic deaths is about 20, um, which, is, which is quite high. But usually people, you measure out what you're getting by taking risk. As soon as you step out your door, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you're taking some type of risk. So where you choose to live, what you choose to eat, where you drive to, um, you know, all of these things, what type of hobbies you have, you know, do you surf or do you collect stamps? And, and, and it's not saying you should not do risky things. You should just know and be smart about it and know that hopefully you're getting a lot of enjoyment from doing something that's risky um, or living in a country where the uh, rate may be higher than the country you came from, but are you getting significant more benefit because of that? Are you having uh, a more enjoyable life? Are you maybe eating better and increasing your life expect expectancy because of that? These are all individual choices and all the things you need to be able to really look at to make a decision as to where I should move, even within your own country. So in summary, we have a new state of emergency. We have a trend that in most parts of Ecuador, the vast majority of, of, of Ecuador is going in the right direction. And we need to sort of see what the next six months bring. Like I said, uh, back in January, when things looked pretty good, I said, it's really gonna take a number of months, if not years to really get grips on cartel issues. It's more than just an Ecuador issue. Um, so things look good. All depends uh, whether the glass is half full or half empty for you, I guess. But let's just keep looking at the data. Let's keep analyzing the data and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, take care everybody. Thanks for watching. If you want more research in the topics like this, Please, uh, you know, like and subscribe to our channel. Take care. Live the life you love.